Nature tends to be unpredictable. Sometimes, even our best laid plans can be derailed, and this trip would be an exercise in adaptability. On a Saturday morning in August, friend and fellow landscape photographer Heath and I set out for a road trip that would take us north to the Sierra Nevada to do some camping and photography. We'd both lived in California for years and diligently checked weather reports before setting out. Yet, neither of us had ever experienced conditions quite so bad as those we encountered. Fortunately, some quick thinking and improvisation would make this trip both unpredictable and rewarding. We would both get to see California like we'd never seen it before, and that experience, while a somber one, was also priceless. We headed up the 15 freeway, entering the 395 near Adelanto, where we immediately encountered smoke upon entering the Mojave. We'd expected smoke, but neither of us had anticipated encountering this much this far south. As we pushed farther north, the smoke grew more and more heavy, with smoke near June Lake and Mammoth forming nearly unbreathable fog everywhere we went. Even pumping gas was difficult, and coughing and watery eyes followed. Camping outside was not going to be an option. We had figured we could either go up to the ancient bristlecone pines in the White Mountains to escape via high altitude, or drive north to Lake Tahoe or Lassen Volcanic National Park to escape geographically. However, fires dominated even those locations with heavy, dense smoke, making all of our contingency plans fall apart entirely. This was going to be an interesting trip. So Heath and I just stopped here on the 395. We are near, we're near Mono Lake uh, and the conditions, as I think you can probably see, are just really post-apocalyptic. Um, the smoke is so bad, I literally have my buff up so that I don't start coughing and get my tonsils all inflamed. Um, it is really insane. Um, we were actually hoping to do some photography without smoke in it. We were just going to drive around and see if we could find somewhere that wasn't smoky, but it's pretty bad. It's pretty horrendous here. So, um, for right now, our current plan for the afternoon is to just embrace it and try and either capture some video, capture some photos, um, to just show what the Sierra Nevada looks like, uh, when it's buried in wildfire smoke. Um, and then from there, dependent, we're going to play it by ear and we may drive north to, uh, Tahoe and then push even farther up to Lassen Volcanic. And then if we have to keep going farther out to the Redwoods or something. So we're just kind of playing it by ear and just driving around and seeing what we can find on this road trip and just completely winging it. And we're just going to try and find somewhere on a forest road or something to camp for the night or maybe on some BLM land. Um, best case scenario, we find a dedicated campsite, but that might not happen. So we're definitely prepared to go off grid if we need to. But anyway, I mean, these conditions, I've never seen this area at all like this. It is just really nuts. And uh, so, yep, that's where we're at. Heath's about to capture some drone footage. Um, and we're just going to see if we can document just how surreal this these atmospheric conditions are with this insane smoke. I have never seen this much smoke in my life. It's been this smoked in all the way since the Mojave. We're all the way up here in Mono County now and it's still in incredibly bad. So this is the Ferguson fire near Yosemite National Park. So let's see how it goes. We stopped to explore this smoky area along the side of the 395 near Mono Lake. It appears to be an excellent scene for photography. However, at the time I couldn't find any compositions I was pleased with, as there was a lot of chaos and very little visual isolation or balance. In retrospect, I still think I could have made an image here. A few minutes later, we drove past the famous 395 cabins you've seen a million photos of on Instagram. We both looked, laughed, and then realized it was one of those few scenes we could actually photograph in these conditions. We also realized that few people ever get to see these cabins in this much smoke, and fewer still have ever captured them on large format film. So we decided to stop and just check out the area. It ended up being a lot of fun in the middle of what ended up becoming a very long day of driving. This proved to be a good opportunity to use my new Intrepid 4x5 version 3 field camera and I decided to take advantage of the soft, warm tonal palette and high speed of Kodak Portra 400. To me, this is the perfect film for the job. Black and white would have also worked, 
but I only had color in 4x5 and hadn't wanted to also set up the 8x10 on the same scene. This scene has been photographed extensively, and we really only wanted to have some fun and visually explore this post-apocalyptic looking scene. Sometimes it's important to remember to just have fun and not take yourself too seriously. While I don't claim this image as art per se, it was definitely a lot of fun to photograph. We've been exploring along the 395 all day, and the smoke conditions are just really insane. So we did scout and try to find some really cool compositions of the smoke with the trees, but all we could find was just chaos, and it was really difficult to, uh, to make anything of it that was coherent. And so here we are, two photographers who claim to care about originality, photographing the tourist shot, which is the 395 cabins on the side of the 395. You could probably hear the cars in the background. Um, so this is just this old uh, derelict cabin here on the 395 and it's just uh, you can see uh, Just really this one of these very old buildings here, and there's another one um, over that way So I'm just sitting here with my intrepid uh, third gen uh, 4x5 and the Schneider 90 millimeter lens and I'm just kind of setting up a um, kind of a dramatic you know near foreground background uh, dramatic near far composition here with the uh, with some rubble here in the foreground some de building debris uh, sort of forming the foreground anchor and then I've got the cabin in the background and this beautiful golden light filtered by the smoke making it very warm and atmospheric and I'm capturing it on Kodak Portra 400 which has just a really uh, pastel creamy look to it which with a high speed which is gonna come out freeze everything so it's nice and sharp and it's gonna really capture the atmosphere of this scene. I don't normally like to shoot man-made objects, but in this case, I think it fits because, you know, the smoke is very apocalyptic. We've got some destroyed buildings here, sort of nature reclaiming what man has created. And I just think it's a really powerful scene despite its absurd popularity. So um, just having some fun, basically, just trying to make some compositions work on our trip because the smoke has just really interfered with our ability to do photography as we expected. Um, we're gonna keep making our way north on the 395 and see what we can find and just playing it by ear. So we'll see what happens. I must confess, I've driven by this cabin numerous times and never once stopped to explore it, let alone photograph it. I've always just written it off as something tourists and hipsters do, and so I've ignored it. However, I often think we miss roadside opportunities right in front of our eyes all the time in our hurry to reach locations that we have in mind. Sometimes we need to remember to be a little spontaneous and allow room for curiosity and exploration along our journey, rather than focusing only on the destination. Curiosity and creativity often go hand in hand. Well, we thought we were going to be in the haze of the apocalypse for this entire trip, but as we were climbing the pass on the 395 north of Mono Lake, we just kind of immediately emerged from the smoke into this crystal clear mountain air, and now it is just it went from being apocalyptic to being like utopian. I mean, we went from not being able to see anything to being able to see everything. So now it's just incredibly beautiful, lush green grass, beautiful trees and scenery, crystal clear air. So it's definitely possible that we might actually get some good scenery uh, to photograph on this trip. And we're hoping to find somewhere to camp tonight that's not um, all smoked in so we'll see what happens but there might actually be hope of escaping the smoke as we drove north through Bridgeport and up toward Walker Pass conditions remained clear and sunny however as we crested Walker Pass heading toward Lake Tahoe we saw it massive clouds of smoke on the horizon from fires farther north the campgrounds around Lake Tahoe were both sold out and smoked in Tahoe was not going to work we considered pushing north to Lassen Volcanic National Park, but it too was smoked in. Realizing Eastern California wasn't going to work, we pulled over on the side of the road for an hour by Topaz Lake and replanned our entire trip from scratch, creating a new plan to explore the California coast. Pushing through the night, we drove until 2 a.m., 
reaching Silicon Valley for a night at a clean hotel, a far cry from the remote wilderness we'd envisioned, yet a welcome respite from all the smoke and long hours on the road. On day two, we'd begin the new version of the trip, exploring the central California coast. <laughs>